January 2024. Close Encounter. A spirited talk by the spiritual scientist Pradeep Krishnan delves into the life and spiritual philosophy of Sri V.S.R. Morty, an eloquent scientist and teacher who is known by the sobriquet spiritual scientist. We all might have come across spiritually inclined scientists. But has anyone heard of a spiritual scientist? About five years ago, I happened to get acquainted with such a unique master living in Hyderabad. During a visit to the Vishwajanani Parishad Ashram, Baptala, Andhra Pradesh, founded by Ma and Asuya Devi, 1923-1985, affectionately addressed as Jilalamudiyama, an article penned under the pseudonym Spiritual Scientist, in the Ashram magazine, The Mother of All, made me curious to know more about the author. The writer, Sri Veluru Ramachandra Morty, aka VSR Morty, was born on February 28, 1950 as the third son of SMT Sarayani Devi and Sri Nagabushan Rao in Turamela village in Guntur district of Andhra Pradesh. He was brought up by his grandparents, Sri Bujanga Rao, and SMT Durgama, at Tanali. At the age of 12, he won the State Science Award for the article Varaha Mahira and Brahat Samhita Kavya. When he was 18, Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba fondly blessed him during a visit, with the sobriquet spiritual scientist. True to the pen name, in life, he became adept, equally in science and spirituality. An engineering graduate in oil technology from HBT Kanpur, Sri Morty helped in establishing many cost-effective oil plants all over the country. Several research papers written by him in the field are still well appreciated in India and abroad. He relentlessly worked for the eradication of child labor and elimination of thalassemia, and was an academic council member of the Institute of Scientific Research, Hyderabad. For the past five decades, with brilliant eloquence, he has delivered nearly 28,000 discourses in India and abroad, presented 2,700 talks on world space, TV, and radio channels, hundreds of speeches in various educational institutions, and authored 38 spiritual books. Sri Morty's pragmatic, positive, deeply spiritual, and harmonizing attitude makes others flock to him to receive guidance on mundane and mystical matters. Once, the late Padma Vibhushan Durgabai Deshmukh had advised Morty, you are educated, be creative and proactive. Live by ideals. Whichever field you belong to, disseminate that knowledge and skills to others. Keep updating your expertise with the changing times. According to Sri S. Mohana Krishna, his friend and author of several, loneliness is a curse. Solitude is serene and rewarding. Not a single minute of inactivity has a place in my schedule. I work for 18 hours a day. During the COVID period, I held online satsangs and wrote three books, Hanuman Chalisa, Upadesa Saram, and God Huli, quotes for sadhana. Spiritual books, the one quality that set him apart from the exponents of spiritual matters is that he always walked the talk. The idealism which is otherworldly is tempered with the here and now ground reality in the actions and words of Sri Morty. Being blessed by several spiritual luminaries from his childhood, his spirituality is devoid of dogmatic beliefs and, in him, one can see the common thread running through the teachings of several great masters. Sri Morty is respected by followers of different schools of thought, and he is a much sought-after person not only by seekers but also by administrators. At a time when religiosity rules over spirituality, the path shown by Mortiji would enable one to travel from ritual to spiritual. True to the words of Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, Morty Garu is an erudite scholar of our times. Interaction with him is always delightful and enlightening. I have had several interesting interactions with him over the phone, WhatsApp, and email. Once, he advised me to follow the rule, what I preach, I must practice and to nourish the roots of knowledge, because when the roots are fine and strong, the fruits will be excellent. After the passing away of his wife SMT Rajaswari in 2014, Sri Morty lives alone in Hyderabad as his daughter SMT Sarvani M is settled abroad. When asked if he has ever felt bored, he replied, loneliness is a curse. Solitude is serene and rewarding. Not a single minute of inactivity has a place in my schedule. I work for 18 hours a day. During the COVID period, I held online satsangs and wrote three books, Hanuman Chalisa, Upadesa Saram, and God Huli, quotes for sadhana. Following are some excerpts from Pradeep Krishnan's interactions with the unique master, who continues to guide and illuminate the hearts and minds of aspirants towards spiritual wisdom. Early Childhood On the 21st day of my birth, by a providential act, my grandparents of advanced age chose to foster me, thereby severing the bond with my biological parents. 
From day one, they brought me up with care, attention, and pure love. My grandmother, adorning the role of a mother and teacher, amused me with stories from the Ramayana and the Bhagavata. Astonishingly, while I was three years old, my grandfather, a landlord, got me workbooks in Telugu and English, and made me read the headlines of the Indian Express. By imparting moral, ethical, and cultural values, they made my childhood pure and pious, and always wished that I should lead a purposeful life like that of Rama, and brave all situations with equipoise. I was able to grasp and retain the moral of all the stories told by my grandmother. Initiation into the Spiritual Path When I was four, my grandmother took me to a Mahatma, Sri Avadu Tendra Saraswati Swami, venerated for decades as Raghuvaradas for the propagation of Sankirtana Sampradaya. Giving me a copy of the Hanuman Chalisa, he told me that if I rendered it by heart, he would give me a banana. I quietly left the room and after about 30 minutes, came back and rendered the 40 dohas, couplets, non-stop with proper diction and modulation. Utterly pleased and delighted, Swamiji, lifting me to his shoulders, blessed me, your name is Ramachandra, Hanuman. Will ever be with you. Thus, instantaneously, I was initiated into the realm of spirituality. Afterwards, for eight long years, I incessantly chanted the Chalisa, and I consider and revere Swamiji as my Diksha Guru. Association with Jilalamudiyama Even during my first meeting, at the age of 12, Jilalamudiyama was kind and compassionate. She left an indelible imprint on my mind and heart. Liberal in granting me close proximity, her benign looks, sweet words, and persona were always profound and distinct. Interestingly, I was able to visit her ashram only after 44 years in 2011, after her samadhi, for a spiritual conference as a guest speaker. It was like a homecoming, and since then, I have been visiting the ashram every month. Ama spoke in a simple language to awaken the inner consciousness of individuals. She never dictated anything but gave paramount relevance and importance to human relations. Jilalamudi Ama had a deep impact on Mordiji. Ama advocated teamwork for homogeneous results, encompassing caste and creed. Her Mahamantra was, accept life as it comes. Attribute everything to the invisible cosmic energy and remain a witness to all that happens. Encounter with Sri Satya Sai Baba and his teachings. Exactly a month after meeting Ama, I had the darshan of Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba on June 9, 1962. His very first words, waiting for you, impregnated with great concern and compassion, still ring in my ears. Thereafter, my life took a new and dynamic turn, and the direct association with him for five and a half decades impacted the physical, metaphysical, and spiritual levels of my aptitude, attitude, and approach towards my sojourn on planet Earth. Even after he turned formless, my association with his mission continues, perhaps till my last breath. When I was in my twenties, he fondly addressed me as the spiritual scientist, a sobriquet the whole world later endorsed. This is the quintessence of his teachings, at 18 Life Positive, January 2023. The physical level, human eyes, divine eyes, and spiritualize all thoughts and deeds, help ever, hurt never, love all, and serve all. At the spiritual level, since all are divine, one should conduct oneself in a righteous manner and through a right way of living. Human birth is to be ennobled. Baba's message service to society is the direct path to nirvana, became a global message. Meeting the Paramacharya of Kunchi Mutt while I was a college student, during a visit in 1966, Sai Baba advised me to visit Kunchi. One day, while riding a bus, as it halted at the Aluru railway gate, I saw a slow-moving palanquin accompanied by several persons chanting, Jai Jai Sankara, Hara Hara Sankara. I jumped out of the bus and ran towards the entourage. At once, Sri Chandrasi Karendra Saraswati Swami, the then Paramacharya of the Kunchi Kamakoti Pitam, respectfully addressed as Mahaparyava, the great elder, in Tamil, a frail figure with shining eyes, sliding aside the curtain of the palki, peeped out and said to me, For forty days we will be in Aluru. Come there after college time. I at once offered Sashtanga Pranam to him by lying prostrate on the road. The bus had stopped there to enable me to have the darshan of the great saint. In the evening, when I went to the place where Swamiji was observing Chatur Messiah, four months of penance, he came out of his room and pointed out a particular place for me to sit and listen to the talks during the next forty days. The Acharya did not talk to me during the rest of the days. On the penultimate day, while giving me prasadam, he said, Life is a great celebration through karma, bhakti, and janana. 
From Janata one must move to Bhakti and then to Karma. The whole human race has come only to indulge in activity, good activities. Through activities that beget bliss to us, one can influence society. My first initiation by the Paramacharya. The next morning, when I went to him to take my leave, he said that out of 8,399,999 species that eat, sleep, crawl, and fly, humans alone are endowed with the power of reason and discretion. A person who translates Dharma into action and indulges only in Dharmic activities can reach the Godhead very quickly. People say that man is a social animal, but in Indian culture, man is not different from God. After several births, we have become humans. Study the scriptures, earn money, and live in a dharmic way, he added. When I mentioned that by meeting him, I had fulfilled the advice of my guru Sri Sai Baba, Swamiji said, Kunchi is static, Acharya is dynamic, always on the move in the propagation of Sanatana Dharma. There is an energy called spiritual energy, consisting of Ikka, Janana, and Kriya Shaktis. Sri Satya Sai Baba represents all the three Shaktis. You are at the right place. That is why he guided you to Kunchi. When you get time, when called by Aman, come to Kunchi. The meeting with him was the springboard that elevated me to the realms of spirituality. To date, I have been maintaining a close connection with the Mutt. A person who translates Dharma into action and indulges only in Dharmic activities can reach the Godhead very quickly. People say that man is a social animal, but in Indian culture, man is not different from God. After several births, we have become humans. Study the scriptures, earn money, and live in a dharmic way, as well as with the subsequent Pitatapetas, late Swami Jayendra Saraswati and Sri Sankara Vijayendra Saraswati Swami, the present head of the 2,600-year-old Mutt. Visit to Tiruvannamalai. As Bhagavan Sri Ramana attained Samadhi on April 14, 1950, just 44 days after my birth, I could not get his darshan. When I was 20, Satya Sai Baba advised me to visit Tiruvannamalai and to spend as much time as possible in Sri Ramana's Ramam. However, the spiritual guidance fructified only after six years when I was assigned a World Bank project at Tiruvannamalai. The 188-day continuous stay at the ashram strengthened my bond with Sri Ramana. Even after returning to Mumbai, for an unbroken 44-year period, every year, I visited the ashram. In February 2019, with the blessings of the Masters, I completed my 110th Gura Pradakshanam, circumambulation of the holy Arunachala Hill. The long association with the ashram helped me imbibe the core philosophy of Bhagavan, making my sadhana intense on the path laid by him. Thus, I wrote nine books in Telugu exclusively on the teachings of Bhagavan and delivered numerous talks at various spiritual forums. The primary teaching of Bhagavan, Inquire Who Am I, though it appears simple and straightforward, is difficult to practice. The path is indeed a mountain path, very steep, and earnest efforts are required to lead the seeker inwards. Instead of merely worshipping him, if one puts into practice the teachings, whenever life throws challenges, the teachings would offer practical help. Life would offer situations, both accidental and incidental, to realize the limitations of the manifest world and to open the doors of reality, the truth of being the self alone. God. God is nothing but a force and feeling within. God is an invisible energy. In Vedanic parlance, the word God is not used. It is Braham. All that exists is Braham, and the cause of the world is also Braham. True spirituality, love, compassion, charity, and accepting life as it comes, all these constitute spirituality. It is much more than rituals, it does not bear any attributes, and never entertains illusions and superstition. Metaphysical and spiritual states are so close that the gap is very fine. Spirituality is a universal thought, encompassing region and religion. Spirituality and science. Every branch of knowledge, including spirituality, is a science. As spirituality is absolute reality, it should be conveyed with a rational outlook, enhancing the esteem of the subject. Spiritual science leads to absolute knowledge. Spirituality begins where science ends. They are not contradictory, Rather, they are complementary. Science, with its limitations, cannot fathom creation, existence, and dissolution wholly. However, without science, the ability to question and the rational approach will not develop. Like any other subject, chemistry, physics, etc., spirituality too has scientific undercurrents. For instance, 
the Ramayana can be narrated either with fervor and emotion to regale the audience or to bring out the intricacies of characters and situations with all the dynamics and dimensions, emphasizing its applicability to life. In the latter way, it becomes a spiritual science. Be here and now. After their sojourn on planet Earth, millions of people have vacated their bodies, and so far, not even one has returned to explain the other world. The Vedas called it I am Eva. Now and here. We may have vivid descriptions of such worlds and quote the scriptures for academic discussions, but the fact remains that no one knows about them. The now and here concept wakes us up to reality and exhorts us to use life to its full advantage. Conflicts among followers of different gurus The problem arises if one is attached to the name and form of the guru. If one is influenced by the teachings and practices, one will not have any problem accepting the great ones with equal reverence. Adi Sankara left behind profound knowledge and wisdom. Ramana Maharishi prepared mankind to get connected instantly to the ultimate truth. Satya Sai Baba carried on a great mission of love all, serve all. Jila Lamuti Ama gave importance to humanism. Sri Ramakrishna combined Bhakti and Janana. Sri Aurobindo emphasized that all life is yoga and Mata Amrit Nandamayi stresses the power of love and social service. The common threat among all Mahatmas is Ekam Sat, Vipra Bahuda Vadanti. Truth is one and it is told differently by the wise. In my deep study of their philosophies, I do not find any difference in the man-making process. There must be cohesion among all devotees of all faiths to come under one umbrella so that the world can take a leaf out of this and make the universe one home. Religion and Spirituality While religion binds us, spirituality liberates us. Religion is guided mostly by the vagaries of the mind, senses, theories, dogmas, etc. Spirituality, quickly and quietly, leads one to salvation, here and now. Once the religious practitioner realizes that he is in the shackles of religious rigorous practices, he turns his thoughts and attitude towards something higher. He, in due course, lands in the spiritual arena. That is all. World is God as well as Mitya. The world is God because the all-pervading Atma manifests as the world, an Atma. It appears to be real. Please note that the one that appears must disappear. In fact, it appears till it disappears. It is make-believe. That is why it is called Mitya. That does not mean it is non-existent. Message to the readers. Human birth is special and unique. Live life king size. Draw bliss through body, mind, and soul at varying levels, always. Accept life as it comes. Contradictions, paradoxes, and inconveniences are but part of life. Try to live in conjunction with them. Sanatana Dharma is a Dharma to be followed by all. Dharma has no ism. Be humane. That is divine. Pradeep Krishnan is a student of consciousness, based in Kerala. A seeker by nature, he is deeply attracted to the teachings of Sri Ramana Maharishi and Sri Nisargadatta Maharaj. 